I'll be very strong. Uh, jo um, uh, Jordan Peterson as well. I have the great privilege today of talking with Ayan Hirzi Ali. Um, she's one of my heroes. I guess that's the case ever since I read her book. Recently, Mohammed Ijab done a video about it and uh, Joe Rogan. Um, Jordan Peterson, he does, like, we'll be honest, we'll be giving him the benefit of doubt, but he's starting to sound like a closet Islamophobe. I'm so sorry. And then people that follow the, the more radical version of the religion that wants to convert people to discuss it, to acknowledge it, and to automatically classify any discussion of it mm -hmm. as Islamophobic. And then I th I've seen this labeled, this, this label put on you, that you are Islamophobic. He's made certain statements about Islam, which he has no knowledge about. And then Joe Rogan invites this uh, woman. The assertion that Islam is a religion of peace. If they want to believe that Islam is a religion of peace, let's let's say it's along. Let's come. Let's do it along with them. It's as if he's saying, you know what? Why don't you say the things I can't? Let me invite you. That, that's what it is. Yani, I can't say it, but I'm you my guest. You know, no one can say nothing. You know, I invited a guest. You know, I didn't tell her to say that. You know, come on, let's not let's not fool around here. It's very simple what you're doing. You can invite anyone. Mohammed Hijab, Hamza Zotsis. There's so many people that you can invite that could come and talk about Islam, but that's not going to be good for you. You don't like that. So the thing is to invite people like her, who's an outright. Yeah, she's a liar. She's a liar. She lied about her whole life, her whole story. You know, and she's there coming and she's lying and saying, you know, that she's talking about forced. Uh, that in, in Islam that we're, we're allowed to, you know, uh, she's talking about dawah and, you know, we can force people to accept, uh, uh, they have to accept Islam by the sword. This is the biggest myth ever, you know, there's specific verses in the Quran in Surah Baqarah verse 256, you know, very clearly, yeah, Islam, Islam, you cannot force anyone to their uh, your religion. It's simple. The expansion of the Islamic empire does not mean there was forced conversions, yeah? It's, the, the empire expanding doesn't mean, you, you know, people being forced to accept Islam. You know, so people have this uh, thinking that, oh, yeah, the Islamic empire expanded and they're converting people by the swords. It's not like that. It's as simple as that to you. Your religion to me, mine. I'm, I can convey, but I can't force. And we have many examples. We have many examples in history where uh, uh, individuals could have forced. Like Umar ibn Khattab, he had a slave where he, um, he, 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 um, he said, look, if only you accepted Islam, you know, etc. So you have many examples where people were given the chance to accept Islam. But yeah, there's an outright liar. And yeah, and inshallah, let's see, hopefully she'll debate Mohammed Hijab one day. Uh, she touched upon it, Gabriel. I don't know if you want to touch upon it. So Ali, she, in her talk with Joe uh, Rogan, she touched upon, and we cover this all the, I mean, we've covered this so many times, but she mentioned, I believe, the uh, forced marriage, honor killings. You, as a, as a, a young woman, were going to be forced into an arranged marriage and this is what made you flee and and head to europe and and wind up in holland correct that's correct yeah. had he been with us earlier he might have taken this initiative to force me into marriage at the age of 15 16 17. You guys, uh, you you get kind of like this is like an old record, right. old old record, you know, that just keeps playing, and you get you know tired of hearing this. These uh, uh, it goes from someone being ignorant who just sincerely sincerely doesn't know, but then somebody who obviously knows the truth, and then even her uh, community there called her out on that, you know. So what do you say for the for the person who sincerely maybe just uh, bit on this, yeah. and, and well, how would you respond for this honor killing, forced wow. marriages? Right, right. I think I think sincerity is is the key here, and you can defer and you can have you know issues, whatever, uh, whatever it is. You know, even with Jordan Peterson, you know, I, mean, I, have, I was reading his book. He's a smart guy, man, you know, uh, but he's really disappointing because he should know better on the academic approach of verifying information. He's an academician, right? So he's being academically dishonest. In the statements that he's making, you're talking about Jordan Simple. Peterson now. This Jordan Peterson. Yeah, yeah, I'm talking about Jordan Peterson. Just I wanted to make that point, right? Because he's a very smart guy. He's a very smart man. And here, you understand that it's not enough to just be smart. You have to be also honest, okay? And you have to, if you're doing so much research, you know how how much academic integrity is important and checking and verifying information. That is the whole, you know, foundation of Islam. Mustalat hadith. The science of verifying hadith and knowledge and information is based on reliability, on you know academic uh, 
checking of who says what, who is this person, are they qualified to actually relate this information. It's a huge, huge science that what's the objective? To just make sure that honesty is, is there when you're passing on information, right? Why? So that obviously you're not going to misguide people with the wrong things. With uh, this woman, may Allah guide her, um, obviously the enemies of Islam have been using these type of tactics from the time of the Prophet ﷺ. And subhanAllah, I mean, I was, today I was, I was teaching a class on, on uh, the fiqh of Sirah, and we were mentioning the incident of uh, a person who came and asked the Prophet about, about the statement in the Quran, Ya Ukhta Harun, O sister Aaron, right, referring to Maryam alayhi salam, right? And till today, bro, the Prophet explained very much, like, you know, like we say, Ben Israel, Abina Ibrahim, this is how the, you, they used to refer to humble people, pious people. As for their ancestors and so on, you know, we are Ben Israel, but we're not directly the sons of, of Israel. I mean, sorry, uh, Ben Adam and Ben Israel were Ben Israel and so on. Till today, bro, you'll find this argument on the Answering Islam website that oh, uh, Prophet didn't know that uh, you know uh, whose who's sister is uh, Aaron, so uh, Mary, sorry, you know. It, I mean, it's just ridiculous. So these all these uh, forced marriages, forced conversions. Uh, by the sword and so on. They keep it's been refuted. It's been academically approached and shown and, and so on. And I'm not denying that there was in the history of Islam, in some cases, no doubt, certain rulers and leaders who did force converse. There are some. Okay, there's no doubt about it. It's not that. That's not the question. The question is, does Islam preach that? Is that the theory of Islam? This is what's debate. As to what some person did in this century or that century, I mean, that you can point to every single nation and religion. There's always going to be certain bad apples that interpreted things and did things their whole way. Now you have the, for example, the Hashashiun, you know, the, uh, where, where the word assassin comes from, right? And how and Salahuddin was directed his attacks towards them, actually, you know. But these were claiming to be Muslims who... Right? We're doing all kinds of evil things. Uh, people will do a lot of things, okay? Bottom line is, what does Islam preach? What does Quran preach? What does the Sunnah preach? This is what we ask the world to look at, all right? This is what we ask the world to look at. Ali, 